Okay, Heaven Root fans, uh, what we're going to do today is um, we're continuing on with this uh, with this 150 horsepower V6 uh, build. Um, we're going to assemble the reeds with a new gasket onto the uh, reed plate and uh, get that put into place. Uh, then we're going to put the heads on and um, that's uh, probably going to be the be the extent of it today. So. Um, we got our uh, our Loctite. It's the the blue Loctite, obviously, which is uh, which is like a medium strength Loctite. <clears throat> um, the gaskets that go on these, uh, they are side Pacific side specific one's port one starboard and we'll figure out which is which I don't think so There we go. Okay, so we'll get our gasket, <clears throat> our gasket in place there. I've already cleaned my screws up, cleaned the old uh, thread sealer off of them. Got them all right there. Um, some of these I can reach a nut driver into, which is uh, I prefer to use, and the other ones you can't reach it into there because of, uh, because of the, the housing gets in the way. So. A couple screws ready to go here. Okay, it goes like that. The reed's going to go this way. I've already gone through these reeds too and double checked them all to see if I could see light through those and um, one of them I had to flip over and I did so successfully and uh, it closed up nicely so uh, so that worked out nice worked out well didn't have to replace any reeds everything looked, looked real good in there I think the torque value on these is right around 30 inch pounds. Very low torque value. I'm gonna get a special tool here. Starting these things. A little easier with this guy. It's called a wedget. I'll only get my screws started with that. Once they're started, you get a regular screwdriver. And get these into place. Just just snug. And over tighten them because the screw's so small and really no need to. You're putting lock tight on everything. If you want to see how this thing works, um there's two separate blades there and then as you slide this forward it brings the blades in together which makes it thicker on the end really neat little tool and helps helps in a lot of circumstances such as this one
Okay, I'm not going to bore you guys with the details of getting all this together. It's pretty uh, self-explanatory once you got uh, once you got one in there, you can see how we put one in there, then you know how it goes. Um, one thing I will touch on is, uh, and I've already tested these, these are check valves. Um, they, allow, uh, they allow for a one-directional one flow of, um, of uh, actually oil is what it ends up puddling down in there. And it allows the oil to travel back into the motor and not out this way um, you have to check these you can manually check them by blowing through them and and then um, creating a vacuum sucking them back out and they should close off uh, these can if these are bad they're not going to hurt really anything on the top end but what they're going to hurt is is your idle if uh, if one of them's bad it can adversely affect the uh, the idle of your engine there's a few other fittings on here. This one right here, this is where your primer, your hose from your electronic primer, your choke goes into, and it uh, distributes fuel through this uh, through this portion here, and um, equally uh, equally spreads a small charge of fuel into the uh, into the combustion chamber when you're uh, when you're uh, initially starting your engine. If you're new to this and aren't really sure exactly what your uh, what uh, 32 inches inch pounds feels like in your torque, I suggest you get a uh, get a torque wrench out. Now we're going to move this over to here. I'm going to install that skylight like this. Then uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause for a while while I get my screws together to go ahead and uh, and get this uh, put into place. I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, well, so what I've done here is I've um, I've got our um, I got our reeds installed onto our uh, reed plate intake portion here. Um, got the screws tightened down, and then I went back and I checked, double checked with my torque wrench to make sure that they were all the proper torque was 32 inch pounds. We don't use any gasket sealer on the intake side of a motor because um, what, what happens if gasoline gets into the if gasoline gets into your intake um, into that gasket sealer it'll form a sludge and it, it'll gum up a motor so that's one reason we do not use it um, probably the main reason we don't use it plus you don't have to you know there's there's no water coming into uh, contact with anything on on uh, in the front of this that uh, there's no high pressure liquids or anything like that so uh, and there's no high pressure uh, there's no high pressure like in the combustion chamber where you got a higher pressure that uh, you, you need that extra little bit of sealer and the higher torque values to uh, to properly uh, um, secure it so um, we're gonna drop our reed box into there then um, when I dis disassembled this motor if you saw that video I pointed out that there are three screws that have washers on them. These screws go toward the, the center of the motor. And um, we're going to go ahead. Because these are a light torque value, I like to put a little Loctite on those as well. Get these three dropped into place. Finish them off. Now, 
once we get all these in, I'd use the same um, type of torque and sequence as we do on our cap. You can't really go in a uh, spiraling fashion on this. So uh, what, do, what we do is we'll just start in the center and work our way outward. First, I'll uh, just use my nut driver to get these things set in. Once they're set in, then we'll go, go back with our torque wrench. And torque them to the appropriate uh, torque value. Okay, and I'm just going to show you on this one. We're not going to not going to bore you with the uh, details of doing the other side. But this other the other side goes together just like this side does. It's just a mirrored image of it. Torque value on these is. Um, 84 inch pounds and like we did on these I up that a little bit and go to uh, and go 200 so I'm going to start off start off at 50 start in the center work our way from the center outward Okay, now up to 100. And that's it. Your intake is now complete on this side. We always keep this stuff covered because you never know when someone can drop a bolt and it bounces and it lands down in there and you don't see it and you never know what can happen, but you always um, do your due diligence and make sure that uh, you keep the stuff covered up and re return your torque wrench to zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this side then we're going to split it over and I'm going to show you how we do our heads. Okay, we got our intakes on. Our uh, reed, uh, reed boxes anyway, that portion of it. Um, <clears throat> now, I'll show you how I put the throttle body on. These gaskets are pretty hard to hold to get them to lay into place. Um, it'd be nice if they came in a package that held them flat, but uh, I 
guess uh, I guess that's not the not the way they go about that. So I'll show you how I do it here. I take uh, take grease, triple guard, and I try not to get grease in uh, any of these uh, check valve spots. And I'll just go along here, a little bit of grease. Get it in the slots before you before you lay the gasket on. she goes start in one end and work your way to the other no matter which end you start on really this is called a spaghetti seal though that's what uh, that's what uh, that's what they call them in uh, some of the books Still just a seal, but looks like a piece of spaghetti. Okay, and once that's in place, go back over and make sure that you are in your make sure that you're in the little channel that it goes in might need to add a little extra grease to get it to sit in the spot right take our port side now this is our starboard port side uh, throttle body butterflies we're gonna call them. Yeah. clean these up a little bit when I do these I do this the same to get all the you know, down to or clean I'll put an X pattern cross hatch on them and once we get that on there we're just going to set this into place and next will come the carburetors um, we got two short screws that go in there I'm going to put those into place and then we're going to do the carburetor Okay, um, we've got that into place. There are uh, all the screws that hold that hold that on go through the carburetors first, except for the ones in the the ones in the bottom. So get these into place, get them started. That way, they're not going to creep out on me. Okay, that's all set there. Now my carburetors. I've already um, I've already rebuilt them. And they come with a spaghetti seal too, and you can see I uh, did the same thing on that with the grease. This is number five. Let's set that up there. Number one here. And this should be three. 
we'll set those out of the way because we're working with two, four, and six. So, it's number four right here. So we'll get her, get her in this place right there. Got number six right here. That one in this place. And last but not least, number two. Okay, now um, we've got our Phillips, Phillips screw that goes in right here. As I've stated previously, once we uh, and we're going to run one of these screws in. You go backwards with it. And you'll feel it drop into spot. I'm not going to tighten this up yet. I'm just getting it in there. I'm not even going to make contact with it. Okay. There we go. If it feels hard to turn in when you're initially doing it, uh, Don't force it. Back back it out again and try it again. A light torque screw as well there we're going to torque them down to uh, 84 inch pounds I don't use any special sequence I'll just do two and then well actually I do when I'm when I'm rebuilding one because you can put this back on a motor and you know have removed either carburetor but I'll tighten two and then 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 two I'm working my way from the center outward and I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. It's uh, 84 inch pounds. I'm not gonna bore you guys with the with the rest of the details on that. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, um, carburetor's on. Everything's torqued down like it's supposed to be. Everything seems to be in uh, pretty good order here. So. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to put our vapor separator uh, fuel pump assembly bracket. It all goes onto, onto the front of the motor here. It's in one bracket, nice, neat, compact little package. But uh, once I get it on here, I'm going to have trouble reaching stuff down here. So I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to go ahead of the game. I'm going to get this, uh, this is our balancing tube. It hooks to uh, that lower main. There's a check, check valve in there. And it, um, it runs oil back into the intake. Um, Get that one into place. I'm still haven't replaced these O-rings. I'm gonna replace these O-rings before I uh, begin to putting that part together. So um, anyhow, got that in there, and then we're gonna start hooking up all the rest of our gadgets here. Um, we've got a uh, we got a uh, this line here that comes off of the uh, vapor pump attaches down here to this um, recirculating fitting. Attach that onto there. Then we've got two lines coming off of our primer. Each one of these lines goes and ties into the uh, to the uh, primer fitting that I showed you guys on the uh, when, I, when we were putting the reed plate on here, the primer fitting's over there. And then you got one on this side of the motor as well. One goes on there. Now we have, um, there's another recirculating fitting here. This hose attaches to that. So, let's 
get those hooked up. Put a little baby zip tie on here. Baby zip tie there. And we'll put a baby zip tie on here. Uh, okay, get this guy into place. worry about zip ties on the primer line they don't come from the factory that way um, that tube fits tight enough to where you don't I uh, don't really need it now we've got our vapor pump ties in right here and uh, we'll go ahead and tie that in we'll get a uh, get a zip tie on that guy that's usually got one of those metal clamps on it but zip ties work just fine Now we have another, our fuel um, pulse limiter here. I'm going to go ahead and tie that guy on. Okay. And then this is our fuel inlet. So that will tie on when we uh, go to, when we go to, uh, put the rest of the motor together and uh, mount it on something or run it or whatever we're going to do. We'll hook it something to there. You got four um, four O-rings that are, that, well they're not an O-ring, they're kind of like a grommet bushing that uh, that that this thing rides on and you know to keep, uh, keep the vibration from causing a lot of problems with it. got four screws with the larger fender washer on it Three. and here's our fourth one 